This time I'd like to talk about isolates. Isolates in Dart are very close to Erlang actors. An isolate can send and receive messages. And in response to a message, an isolate can spawn more isolates, send more messages, and of course, can create a lot of objects to perform some sort of computation. Dart isolates has the following two properties. There is no shared state between isolates. And the implication of it is that you won't have to worry about mutexes, locks, race conditions, etc. The other property is that isolates communicate with each other via synchronous message passing. If you aren't familiar with the actor model, all these things may sound a little bit confusing. To clear it up, let's briefly look at the metaphor that's often used to explain actors or isolates. Uh, this is the city of Strono. Paul, Richard and Lisa, they represent isolates, live in this wonderful city. Each of them owns a house, which has a mailbox. And the only way Paul, Richard and Lisa can communicate with each other is by sending letters. Our friends can do whatever they want inside their houses without talking to each other. Moreover, they can do it concurrently. Now, imagine Paul is going to buy a car. So he wants some advice from Richard who have recently bought a car. He sends a letter to Richard asking for advice. And after he's done with the letter, Paul returns to doing whatever he was doing before. Eventually, Richard receives the letter and he replies that Toyota is the best. At the same time, Lisa sends a letter to Paul asking him to return the book he borrowed a while ago. At this point, Paul hasn't received any messages, but neither Richard or Lisa are blocked. When Paul checks his mailbox, he will find two letters, one from Richard and the other one from Lisa. He will process each letter and make some decisions based on the information he will get. What have we learned from this example? Isolates can operate independently if they communicate via synchronous messages. All messages are non-blocking, so after a message is sent, an isolate doesn't have to wait for a response. Messages get buffered like letters in a mailbox. A message can contain a return address, but it's not required. All Dart code runs in isolates. The isolate created by the VM to run the main function is called the root isolate. When the root isolate terminates, it terminates the whole VM. Alright, what we have here is the function adding up a bunch of numbers and printing the result. Let's go through all the steps to run this computation in a separate isolate. First, we import the isolate library. Second, we change the signature of the function so it can be used as an entry point for an isolate. The entry point should expect no arguments. Instead, we are going to receive messages. Next, we spawn calculator isolate. Spawn function returns a send port, an object that we can use to send messages to an isolate. And finally, we send a message, which in our case is just a list of numbers. Now let's run our application and it works. This is a very simple example, but it illustrates a few important points. Any top-level function expecting no arguments can be used as an entry point. Each isolate has a port variable, an instance of the receive port class, and we can use it to receive messages. Spawn function creates a new isolate and returns an instance of send port. We can use it instance to send messages to the created isolate. And that's it for today. Next time we're going to look at more advanced scenarios of using isolate in Dart. Thanks for watching.